Buongiorno, hello, you're right. Uh, so, bit of an odd one because I haven't done this before. I am trying something new. Welcome to whatever I'm gonna call this. I haven't thought of a name yet, so I'm just gonna put that in here. So welcome to whatever I've decided to name this series. The reason I'm making this video and indeed this series of videos is because I'm a teacher and uh, all the pupils I teach have been sent home. And my main concern is particularly that the science-minded individuals or those who really enjoy science are going to be missing out. Well, I, everyone's missing out everything to be fair, but I can't do much about uh, all of the things. But being a science teacher with time to spare, uh, space at home to do experiments and a camera, I've decided to try and make some challenges, some science experiments or some demonstrations that you guys can do at home or challenges or things that you can find out. So here's the plan. I'm going to try and make a video a week if I can. I'm going to set some sort of challenge or experiment or thing that you can do at home to do with science. And in the video next week, I'm going to go back to that and do a little callback and show you what you could have done. Or if you guys want to send some stuff to me or put something in the comments, I'll add that in. And then I'll set some sort of challenge or show you an experiment or something that you can then do the following week. The idea is to encourage you to actually do some stuff at home to use uh, things that you might have lying around the house. I don't want anyone leaving the house just to particularly buy something. So if possible, I'm using very generic stuff or asking you to use generic stuff or find a new way to do it. Find something that is cheap, that is creative, that uses stuff you already have. I don't want you going out and buying 50 balloons uh, at the shop or what have you. Because ultimately this is something that you can have a bit of fun with and learn about, but staying at home is the priority. So today's challenge. We generally teach that there are about nine forms of energy, including elastic, gravitational, chemical, electrical, nuclear, light, heat, sound, and kinetic. But what is really cool about energy is that you can't destroy it or create it, but you can turn it from one thing into another thing. So plants, for example, take light energy from the sun, they turn it into chemical energy that they store in the plant, which we can then eat, for example. So right now you're looking at a screen, there's electrical energy in the computer transferring into light energy from the pixels, which are traveling through to your eye, which turns it back into electrical energy. Some of them are very easy if you are moving, for example, you are turning chemical energy in your body into kinetic energy, movement energy. But that's a really obvious and easy one, so I want you to try and find some interesting ways that you can turn one form of energy into another form of energy. I've wanted to do something about this for a while because there's a really cool video by OK Go, which are a band. They made a music video where they made a Rube Goldberg machine, which is a very complicated way of uh, doing something very simple. I'll put a link to that video in the doobly-doo. But what I really like about that video is it shows lots of different ways of turning one form of energy into another form of energy. So I'm going to show you one of those that you can then do at home. But have fun, be creative with it. So I'm going to show you how to turn sound energy into kinetic energy. So you can do the opposite of that really simply. If you have a ruler, you can turn kinetic energy into sound energy. If something moves, it shows kinetic energy. And if it moves fast enough, it provides a vibration. And a vibration then can turn into sound. You can do that with a ruler. So if you have a ruler or something similar, if you put one hand on the desk and then flip the ruler, you can make a sound. But what's really interesting is going backwards, turning sound energy into kinetic energy. So what I've got is like a black cardboard lid for something and inside I have put uh, a very, very small amount of uh, sugar. The idea with this is it's got to be a very fine powder, it's got to have a good contrast. So white powder on a black background or black powder on a white background. So if you don't have anything flat and black like that, you can maybe use uh, some sort of white or light coloured cardboard and put some uh, tea granules on it or any other dark coloured powder. Now you need to put that on a speaker. Now ideally you want like a flat speaker. The only flat speaker I have with a flat sort of surface is this one, which is particularly ancient from the 80s. And then instead of like a modern speaker connection, it just has two wires, which makes it a little bit difficult. So I can't plug it into my phone, but I can plug it into this. Again, particularly ancient machinery. <sighs> I've tried like every possible combination here. Yep, yes! Yeah. Playing music on YouTube, never a good idea because I kind of want to avoid getting copyright striked. Who is not litigious? Meatloaf litigious. I also think you want to get something with a... 
So you want to lay your speaker flat, put whatever you're using on top of it with whatever you have sprinkled on top, and crank up the volume. the coolest thing and there are videos out there if you search for it where they actually can uh, ramp up the volume and do different things with the frequency where you get different patterns which is really cool I think. Just so you know I did try this with my modern speaker which is like a cylinder <laughs> uh, but that didn't work but so I think this does need to be a uh, flat speaker. And you do really need to crank up the volume. So there we go, sound energy turned into kinetic energy. That sound energy from the speaker causes a vibration which then causes sugar or sand or salt or what have you to move. So if you are interested, try and do it yourself, try and find another way to make some form of energy into another form of energy. There is a really cool way of turning heat and light energy into kinetic energy, making something called a crux radiometer. And I haven't been able to make it work, but if you do manage to make one and it works, please let me know. I'm going to keep on trying to make it work this week. I'm convinced there is a way to do it. So please, if you're interested, turn one form of energy into another form of energy. Let me know how you get on. Uh, this is open for anyone at the school I teach, but also anyone who happens to fall upon this video. As I said, I'm going to try and make one weekly if I can uh, and give you a new sort of scientific challenge to do next week. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Keep safe. Bye-bye.